Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equation. This is video number 15 for chapter 3. We now still continue our study of the non-homogeneous equation. So in this video, we'll consider the situation where the source term, the right hand side g of t, is a trig function. In particular, it's a sine or cosine function. Let's start with an example. Here's the example y double prime minus 3y prime minus 4y equal sine t. So the right hand side is a sine function. Okay, so we will focus on finding the form of the particular solution. We see that the function g is a sine function. So based on our experience, we will now try to find a particular solution with the same or similar same form. Now let's make some further observation. Um, we see that um, we have first derivative and second derivative of the unknown on the left hand side. And if we shall guess a particular solution to be a sign, then we know that the sine derivative will be cosine. So this term will give us a cosine function, which we don't have cosine on the right hand side to match it. Therefore, it's trickier than just taking a sine function. So the conclusion here would be that we would not also must have cosine term in the particular solution as well. Okay, so now here is the form um, that we have decided. Uh, I'll block it here. So it will be a combination of sine and cosine function um, having the same um, coefficient as uh, the, the g term. So a sine t plus b cosine t, where the capital A and B are the coefficients to be determined. Okay, and then we will plug this back in. So we need the derivatives. So derivative of y, well, sine derivative is cosine, cosine is negative sine, so it's in simple. And then we can write out also the second derivative. So cosine derivative is negative sine, and sine derivative is cosine. Okay, now we will plug these back into the equation. So y double prime here, is the y double prime minus 3y prime so minus 3 that's y prime this term is here and then minus 4y minus 4 this term is just the y term okay and that should be capital B and then we see here that um, on this will be the left hand side of the equation and uh, we see that we have two types of terms one type is sine t times some number, which is this term, this term, and this term. And we're going to collect them together. So collect sine t and the coefficient in front of sine t. We'll get negative a, and then we get positive 3b, and we get negative 4a. So together is negative 5a plus 3b. And then let's look at the cosine term. So we have a negative b here, and then negative 3a, and then negative 4b. Combine this with a negative b, we get negative 5b, and that's in front of cosine t. And this must equal to the right-hand side, which is a, a sine t. So basically, now we have an, an equation to be satisfied, this one. And this shall hold for any t, which basically means we can compare the coefficient of the terms and they must match. And the right hand side can be considered as 1 times sine t plus 0 times cosine t. Okay, so um, we repeat that re equation here on the top and then we compare terms. And then um, the coefficient in front of sine is this, must equal 1 because it's 1. And the one in front of cosine must be 0 because I don't have cosine term there. So we see that we have 
two unknowns, capital A and B, and two linear equations. And we know how to solve it, so I won't go into the details. You solve it and you'll find the values for A and B, where capital A is 5 over 34 and B is 3 over 34. Uh, um, A actually has to be negative. Um, sorry for that typo. Okay, now we see that we have found a particular solution. We can plug back the value of A and B. Okay, so which are the um, coefficient we found. So we have a particular solution. We have found one. Okay, let's make some um, observation based from this example, we see that point one, if the right hand side is a some constant times a cosine function, instead of the sine function we have seen in our example, then we see that the same form would work. Meaning um, the particular solution would be a capital A sine t plus capital B cosine t, that would work. Um, more generally, if the right hand side now is already some constant times sine t plus some constant times cosine t, as long as the coefficient in front of t are the same in front of the sine and cosine, then um, these two terms are considered the same type of term because from the discussion and the example we see that um, both of them will require the same form okay and so the same form would still work okay so um, those observations are general in general cases you can do that but then we know there are cases where this guess of the form would not work and in particular, um, if the form that we are guessing in the end is a solution to the homogeneous equation, then it will never work. Okay, so let's take an example in that direction. We have this equation, y double prime plus y is sine t, and we want to find the general solution. Okay, so let's first find the homogeneous solution. So we set up the characteristic equation r squared plus 1 0 and we find two roots plus minus i and then we know sine and cosine are the solutions and the homogeneous solution, the general solution for the homogeneous one is uh, a linear combination of them. Now the next step is to find a particular solution, capital Y. If we use our um, trick from the previous examples, um, that is guessing the same form as the source term, we would have guessed a sine t plus b cosine t. And we see that that will not work because you see that this is exactly the same form as the solution to the homogeneous equation, meaning plug this capital Y in you will get zero for any choices of capital A and B, so it doesn't work. Okay, so um, a way to resolve this difficulty, as we have done, is uh, multiplying the old guess with a t. Okay, so the f the form we will be guessing will be um, t times a sine t plus b cosine t. Okay, and we see that we would need the derivatives, so let's um, work this out. It should be pretty easy, different, differentiating sine and cosine and the product rule. So y prime will be differentiate t, I get that. And then keep the t, you differentiate this and you get this. Okay, so um, there's a negative sign here, cosine derivative is negative sign. And then we need also the second derivative. You differentiate this twice, and, and uh, this will give you sine and cosine, and this will give you sine and cosine. And here we arrange the terms. The sine and cosine terms are collected together. OK, um, you, you may want to pause and work out the details. 
it's just uh, um, product rules. And then we need to plug these back into the equation. So the left hand side is y double prime plus y, which is this guy here plus this guy. Okay. And then actually there are some com computations involved here. I did some simplification because I add the sine terms together where ATTA cancels. So I just get 2B sine T. And then um, I also combine the cosine terms. BT cancels that BT. So I just get 2A cosine T. Okay. And then that must equal to the right hand side, which is um, sine t. So basically, we have this equation that um, must hold for all t. And now we can compare the coefficients to the right hand side. So 2b must match 1, and that gives me b is negative half, negative 2b. And then 2a shall be 0, so a is 0. Okay, so this now gives me a particular solution um, by um, putting in the value a is 0, though so we will not have the t sine t term, and put in this b value, we'll get a t cosine t with a negative half in front. Okay, so putting this back, and we can write out the general solution, which is the solution for the homogeneous equation plus a particular solution. So is uh, c1 cosine t plus c2 sine t and we and then add on top of the particular solution which is negative half t cosine t. Okay so um, now let's do some summary. Um, for the case where the g is a sine or cosine function with the same um, coefficient in front of t. Okay, So if gt is uh, sine alpha t or cosine alpha t or the combination of them with some number in front of them, then the form of the particular solution um, would depend on the roots r1, r2 of the characteristic equation. And in fact, we'll have um, two cases. The first case is that um, the roots r1, r2 is not plus minus alpha i. If that's the case, then your form will be the same as g, which is sine and cosine. So y, capital Y will be some a times sine alpha t plus some b times cosine alpha t. The second case where um, the roots are exactly um, a pure imaginary pair alpha i plus minus, then we know this doesn't work. Then your form will be take this and multiply it by a t. Okay, so um, we can uh, note that in case number two would occur if your equation is of the form that is y double prime plus alpha square y is a times sine alpha t plus b times cosine alpha t. Okay, so before we move further to other kind of a, a right hand side source term, let's uh, summarize some general rules we have uh, discovered so far of the form of the particular solution of uh, this equation here. Okay, so constant coefficient and with the source term. So rule number one, usually the particular solution takes the same form as um, the source term gt here. Rule number two, is that now we have an exception, except if the form of gt that you have guessed here provides a solution to the homogeneous equation, then this doesn't work. And then what you do is then you multiply the guess that doesn't work by a t, and then that would work. Rule number three, 
if for some reason we have seen also that the resulting rule uh, form you had from rule 2 still doesn't work, then you can take that guess and multiply it by another t, okay? And hopefully that will work. And it does actually. Okay, so um, this is some kind of a general guideline to um, what we do. And uh, um, next video, we will look into more examples of more forms of GT and see how this works out. Okay, so that's all I have to say for this video and hope you liked it and I'll see you next time.